Ephesians chapter 1, and we're looking this evening at verses 13 and 14. And so I'm going to start reading at verse number 7, and we're going to look at verse 13 and 14 this evening. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, and whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And this evening we're looking at verses 13 and 14, where it says that we've been sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the text that's before us this evening as we consider what it means to be sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, what it means to have that assurance of the Spirit within and to know that we are saved, to know that we are God's children. And we're so thankful, Lord, for the peace you've given to our hearts and minds and for the assurance that comes with the, the gospel. And we pray, Lord, this evening that you'll work in each heart according to each need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. You all know what an engagement ring is, I suppose. And you ask a lady to marry you, and she wears that ring. Soon later, they add another one once, to, once you get married. But, you know, my wife, unfortunately, can't wear her wedding ring these days, her engagement ring either. She can't wear her rings because, you know, after having Lily, she just hasn't, uh, the fingers aren't the same size as they used to be, I guess. I'm probably saying too much right there. But anyways, but the other day, I made the mistake, no, 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 that wasn't a mistake. The other day, I proposed to Rosalie. I said to Rosalie, I said, Rosalie, will you marry me? And she said, Daddy, you can't marry me. You're already married to mommy. And I looked at mommy's hand and I said, I don't see no ring. <laughs> anyway, anyway, she still wouldn't marry me, so we're working on that. But, uh, you know, the engagement ring, what does it mean? What does it signify? Well, the engagement ring, it's a promise. A promise, you know, that one day we'll be together. And did you know that God has given us the same kind of thing? God has given to us an engagement ring, if you will, that a promise to us that one day we will be with him in glory, a guarantee to us that we are his, that, we, that I am his and he is mine. I wonder today, do you have that ring on? How do you know that the Gentiles have been brought into the kingdom of God? How do you know that God has extended his saving grace to the ends of the earth? How do you know on a personal level? How do you know that you have been accepted in the beloved? How do you know that you are a part of the family of God? How do you know that it's real, that you're saved? How do you know? The text before us is the answer. We know because he has given us his spirit. We have the spirit within we've been sealed the text says by that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance that word earnest is a fun word it literally means down payment and we'll look at that a little later this evening but also the word earnest in the text it's actually the same word that they still use in greece today at least i'm told this that speaks of your wedding ring or engagement ring. It's the word earnest. 
that promise, that ring, that seal, that token, that assurance that I am his and he is mine. The assurance that the promise made will be kept. The promise of what's to come. He is the Holy Spirit of, of promise. And having the spirit within is all the assurance we need that we belong to him. We ask the question, how do you know that you're saved? How do you know that it's real? How do you know that you've been born again? How do you know? It's because he's given to us of his spirit. He's put the proof within us. He put a little down payment of his glory into our souls. He has slang terminology. He, he put a ring on it. He made a promise and made his promise sure by giving to us the Holy Spirit. Our text tells us that he has sealed us with that Holy Spirit of promise. And tonight, as we look at these verses, I'd like to consider what that means to be sealed by the Spirit, the sealing of the Spirit. And not a usual outline for me, I guess, this evening, but just asking a few questions. First of all, when you think of the sealing of the Spirit, I want you to consider, first of all, tonight, when it happened. When was it that you were sealed by the Spirit? Because let's remember, for every Christian, this has happened. This is something that has taken place in your heart and life. There is not one person that was a member there in the church at Ephesus who this had not happened to. And so it is here today. It's happened to you. If you know Christ as your Savior, if you've called on the Lord, you have been sealed in Christ with that Holy Spirit of promise. This verse is not asking a question. It's not saying this might happen to you one day. It's just stating a matter of fact. It's just telling us what happened the moment we put our faith and trust in him. And what happened in that moment is that we were sealed, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Look at verse number 13, talking about Christ when it says, In whom? In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The Bible's telling us what happened. You heard the truth. You heard that Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures. You heard how he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You heard how he came into this world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. You heard him say, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You heard him say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you trusted in him. You believed. You stop trying to do it on your own. You stop trying to save yourself. You stop trying to go your own way. And you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, if I'm going to be saved, the only way I can be saved is through Jesus. He said, I can't do it on my own. I can't save myself. The, the church can't save me. That preacher can't save me. Only Jesus can save me. And you put your faith and trust in him. You said, Lord Jesus, please save me. Come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. Save me from hell. Come into my heart and save me. You heard the gospel of salvation. And you trusted in him. You believed on him. And the Bible tells us that in that moment, that very moment, something else happened. The moment you believed something incredible happened. The Bible tells us in our text that when you believed, you were sealed, sealed in him with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were locked up inside of him by the Spirit of God. You were secured in him by the Holy Spirit of promise. Your eternity was settled once and for all. Your security was set in stone once and forever. 
sealed by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God made his promise felt. When did it happen? It happens the moment you believe. You say, but the text says after. Maybe it takes a little while. No, it's just a matter of order. After. If you never believed, it wouldn't have happened. If you never put your faith and trust in him, it, it would never have happened. But as soon as you believe, then in that moment, you were sealed by the Spirit of God. The text is a text that's bringing out the fact that the Gentiles have been brought into the family of God. And it's pointing back to Cornelius's household in Acts chapter 10, when Peter preached the gospel to them and the Holy Spirit came down and they were filled with the Spirit. And when did it happen? Did it happen after they got baptized? Did it happen after they did some great work? When did it, ha when did it happen? It happened while Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 10. Peter was preaching, and as he was preaching the word of truth to them, they believed what he was saying. And as soon as they believed, they were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And so it is in our lives. When are we sealed? It's when we believe. It's when we put our faith and trust in him. Uh, we always lead someone in prayer and say, call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. But I have heard testimonies where a man will say, you know, I got saved five rows back. I got saved five rows back when I, when I raised my hand. I got saved when I made that decision. I'm trusting Christ and I'm going forward and putting my faith and trust in him. It's that very moment when you believe, when you put your trust in Christ. That's the moment that the Holy Spirit is given. When you receive the Spirit of God, when he makes his residence in your heart and life, it's in that moment that you're sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise. That's when it happened. Now let's answer the question, now what was it that happened exactly? What happened? What does it mean when it tells us we were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise? The word seal literally is referring to a stamp, but just think of it in context here in our text before we look at the stamp and the seal in that sense. I think right now of a seal on a bottle because it tells us that we are sealed in Christ. We're sealed in him. And it's noting security, isn't it? Noting that we are secure in him. You think of how uh, when you put a lid on a bottle, uh, it's keep the, that seal keeps us inside, keeps us from getting out. Don't you know that in Christ, you're secure. In Christ, you can't get out. Jesus said in John 10, 28 and 29, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He says, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. You're secure in his hand, see, sealed up in him. You, you can't get out. I really hope you're not claustrophobic because you are stuck in Christ. There's no getting out of there. There's no weaseling out of him. You know how uh, children are, right? Uh, we always thought we were perfect parents. And then we had Nathan. <laughs> Hi, Nate. <laughs> but with Ethan, we could pick him up and Ethan would, Ethan would, Ethan would just, he'd never try to get away. He'd always just be, and we always had him in perfect, at least at these ages, we always had him in perfect control. Since then, we, we found out that all our children are sinners. But anyways, but Nathan, he just had a way where I could pick him up and no matter, it was Lily's age. And he just would find his way to just wheeze a load of my hands. He just, and I had to be a constant battle to keep him from flying to the floor and landing somewhere. And ultimately, I typically was able to keep him in my hands. But, you know, when it comes to our Heavenly Father, there's no getting out of those hands. There's no struggling our way away from him. We are secure in him. Paul wrote of this when he said in Romans 8.38, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You're not getting away from him. You've been sealed. You say, but we live down here. How is it a seal when we're all the way down here on earth? Well, let's think of what that word seal literally means. It literally is referring to setting one's mark on something. It's a word that's used for a king sealing an envelope. It's a seal that would mark something as belonging to somebody. And that's what the seal is referring to here. It's God putting his mark on us and saying that we are his. We belong to him. It's making so that all can see that we have been claimed by him. We are his property. We are his peculiar people, his one and only people. We belong to him. He's put his mark on us, the stamp, the seal of the Holy Spirit of God. It's interesting to note that in the Bible, there are two cities that Paul writes to and refers to the seal. And both of those cities are places of the great of the lumber industry in those days, Ephesians and then Corinthians. And in the lumber industry, did you know that they mark trees? They put seals on trees so that they know who it is that they're sending the tree to, who it is that is purchasing the tree that's been cut down. They say that they cut down a tree and someone would come and decide that that their company is going to purchase that tree. And so they'd have the seal put on the tree But then all the trees that are cut down, regardless of who's purchasing it, they be put into the sea. And in that that part of the world, they put them into the, I I believe it's, it was in the Black Sea they put them in. And uh, with all kinds of trees, belonged to all kinds of other people who had their own personal marks put on those trees until it got to its destination. And then when the tree that would get there, would get to the, get to the, Get to the docks, I guess. <laughs> we live in a port community, but I don't know the words for these things sometimes. My mind's blank. But when it got to the port, they then would come and look for the tree with their mark on it. And then they'd purchase the rest of the tree. It had its seal on it. And then they'd come and they'd purchase the rest of it when it got to port. And H.A. Ironside says, Though you and I are still tossing about on the waters of this poor scene, we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And when the appointed day comes and the blessed Lord takes his own to be with himself, that will be the day of the redemption of his purchased possession. And he will take you out of this world. All who have been sealed with his spirit, we will go be with him in yonder bright glory. He sealed us as his own. He's literally, he's put his mark upon us, showing that we're his. We're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And he asked the question, well, how do I know that this has happened? Well, the first proof, obviously, is the Bible. The word of God tells us so. But did you know that the seal, when he puts the Holy Spirit within us, when he seals us, He's stamping his image upon us. F.B. Meyer says that the seal is the imprint of the beloved face. When a king would seal the envelope, it would literally often be an image of the king. It would be a picture of royalty. It would be something that identified as him. And God, when he seals us, you know what he does? He stamps his image on us. He makes us like him. The Bible says it's on your bulletin this morning that you you got this morning and I think there's still some by the door. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He's making you a new creature in Christ. And what's he wanting to do with you? He is conforming you, Romans 8, 29, to the image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And friend, have you noticed since you believed that you're more like him than you were before. You say it, I don't, I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. Why is it that you're here tonight? Why is it that you want to do what's right? Why is it that you want to know what the Bible says? Is that, does that come from yourself? No, it doesn't come from you. Philippians 2 verse 13 tells us, for it is God which worketh in you, 
both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God's done his work inside of us. God is working in our hearts and lives to make us more like his son every day. That is the spirit working within. We've been sealed by the spirit. You know, it comes to our love for one another. Do you love Christians? Anybody here not love Christians? Oh, good. I don't see any hands. We love one another. We love the brethren. Ben's just being silly. But anyways, what, where does that come from? That comes from the spirit. First John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death onto life because we love the brethren. Can't get enough of God's people. You know, I, I, I got to say, I, 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 I find it sometimes, if I go away, I find it difficult. I like vacations. I like to see my family. I like to travel. But you know what? I always want to get back because I want to see my church family. And it's not just that you're my church family. It's that you're my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because God has put a love within my heart for the brethren. He's put a love within my heart for one another. And you know, he's done the same thing for you. I, uh, I, I mean, it just makes my day to see one of you at Walmart or something like that. I saw a couple at Walmart a few weeks ago. I see, I saw, I've seen many of you at Walmart, actually looking around. Anyways, <laughs> but it just makes my day to be out and about and see God's people. And it's because God's put that within us, that love for the brethren. And you know, how do you know that he's done it? Well, it's just as simple as putting yourself into the story. We know him, we belong to him because of his word. And it's as simple as looking at the scriptures and seeing, you know, that you're in there. Did you know that you're in there? I'll show you. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verse number 16. The most famous verse. This was... The verse, the only verse I learned before the memory verse this month. I learned the memory verse, and then I also learned John 3.16 before that. Maybe learned one other before that now that I'm thinking about it. But anyways, but John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you know that you're in that verse? I'm not in that verse, you say. You are in that verse because after all, who is he talking about when he says whosoever? Doesn't that include you? Doesn't that include me? When it says, for God so loved the world. Now, my brother would always tell me that I was adopted from another planet. He did tell me that, but that's not the truth. I am from this world. And so are you. For God so loved the world. For God so loved Luke Higgs. For God so loved you, put your name there. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that if Luke Higgs believeth in him, Luke Higgs should not perish, but have everlasting life. They put yourself into the story. Have you seen in the Bible the security you have in Christ? We have heard the word of truth. And the moment he belie we believed on him, he sealed us with that Holy Spirit of promise. We've answered the question, when it happens, what happened, how do I know that it's happened? And one more question this evening, what does it mean for the future? You now, praise the Lord, we've been sealed, but notice what he's called by that Holy Spirit of promise, the spirit of promise. It, notice in our text that verse 13, back to Ephesians chapter 1, that verse 13 and 14 are all one sentence. They're one sentence together. And it's a continuation. Verse 14 is a continuation and expounding on this truth that we've been sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise. And in our text, it tells us the Holy Spirit who seals us, the seal that we have, the Holy Spirit, he, he is the earnest of our inheritance. What does that mean? We spoke already that that word earnest refers to an engagement ring, but also it can refer to 
the purchase of something, as the down payment. And in our text, the Holy Spirit is the down payment from God to us from our inheritance. It's a portion of our inheritance that God's given to us ahead of time. We've, remember, we are joint heirs with Christ. We've seen that we have been predestinated onto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. God has marked out our future and that we are to be declared his children. So we are his rightful heirs. And it says in verse 11 that we have in Christ obtained an inheritance. We've been predestinated to it according to the promise of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. There is an inheritance waiting for us in glory. That's something to think about. That's something to get excited about. Uh, uh, you have an inheritance. Uh, we think of men that have left great things for their children. I think of uh, very recently, uh, the owner of the Ottawa Senators passed away. So his children inherited a hockey team. I would like to inherit a hockey team. I would think that's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd want the Ottawa Senators, but, uh, you know, <laughs> a hockey team, it would be. But, you know, our Heavenly Father has a far greater inheritance for us than that. Laid up for us in glory, reserved in heaven just for us. Think of that. We are God's heirs, joint heirs with Christ. And he has a glorious future plan for us. And how do you know that it's yours? Because he's given to us of his spirit. The Holy Spirit, that seal that we've been sealed with is the engagement ring, the down payment from God, guaranteeing us everything that God has for us. Think of that. You know, because the fact is, we already are so rich in Christ. We already have so much in him. We already have so much to be thankful for. Just think of it. We have a peace that passes understanding. We have a faith that can stand in every storm and every doubt. We have a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. We have the spirit of God within us. We already have so much. And yet to think there's even more to come. The best is yet to come. It was J.D. Deck who wrote, If here on earth the thoughts of Jesus' is love lift our poor hearts this weary world above, if even here the taste of heavenly springs so cheers the spirit that the pilgrim sings, what will the sunshine of his glory prove? What the unmingled fullness of his love? What hallelujahs? Will his presence raise what but one loud, eternal burst of praise? Oh, what it will be like when we see Jesus. You'll see him. He has an inheritance in heaven for you. It says in verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Christ has purchased our inheritance. He purchased it on the cross. He redeemed it for us, our text tells us. And in that day, he'll give you all of it. And in that day, we'll praise the glory of his grace. Just be one more thing to praise the Lord for, for all eternity. And we know what's going to happen because today, we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. The fact that we are his and he is ours, it's proven to us by the Spirit. He's put a ring on it, you'd say, to guarantee us of our future. He put, he's put a, his spirit within us, his name on us, to give us security that we are his and that he is ours. It's blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And the Holy Spirit guarantees us of all of it. He's the seal. He's the engagement ring, if you will. 
what a gift he is to us. You know, when I proposed to my wife, she, she thought the engagement ring that I gave her was pretty nice. I don't know if it was pretty nice or not, but we go to, uh, I did my best. I went through that whole mall, looked at every store and finally settled on what I thought was the perfect one. And so we get to, we get to uh, dinner that evening and uh, she's not even talking to me. All she's doing is taking pictures of her engagement ring, taking pictures of it. And just, I felt like I wasn't even there. And uh, she's just taking pictures of the ring. Anyways, it ended up working out for us because this elderly couple that was sitting at the table across from us couldn't help but notice how enamored she was with this ring. And they came over and they gave us $20 for our future together. So I tell my wife now to pull up the camera more often, but she uh, doesn't work the same as it used to. But anyways, but you know, she understood how wonderful an engagement ring was. Well, as Christians, I wonder, do you realize how wonderful it is that you've been sealed by the Spirit? How wonderful it is that the Holy Spirit of God lives within you, and he's the Holy Spirit of promise, the promise of all that God has for us in the future. Let's pray. Our Father, I thank you, Lord, for this text that we considered this evening. Lord, it's so wonderful to know that we've been sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise. We're so thankful for the work that you've done in our hearts. The moment we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray this evening that if there is someone that's never been saved, I pray that, that won't be saved tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll work in each heart according to each need this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I do wonder this evening, is there someone that's never been born again, never put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? If that's you this evening, would you raise your hand? I'd love to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Anyone at all? Our Father, thank you for the time we've had in your word. I pray that now you'll bless now as we prepare our hearts for the communion time, as we reflect on what our Savior's done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.